journey. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Walking the Path. So grateful, so grateful, so thankful to be here with you. Um, I want to welcome you to welcome to your life. <laughs> this is it. This is it. This is our life. Another day, another chance, another opportunity to walk in love, to walk in beauty, to walk in divine intelligence. And it's happening now, right where you are, right where I am. It's all happening now. And we get to be a part of it. We get to participate in it. How grateful am I? So what's going on at Rhythmia? Well, we have an amazing group here this week. Um, it's just as I share with you each week, so amazing what we what we get to see. You know, the, those of us who are fortunate enough to have the privilege of serving here, um, we get to see every week this transformation. Like every week, it starts the same. People come in Saturday, Sunday. They're like, uh, I don't know what's going on. What did I get myself into? Um, there's a few. Uh, there's a few folks from uh, that you know return guests that are like. Oh my God, it's going to be so good. You guys don't worry. And then Monday, people are like, oh, I'm nervous. I don't know. And then Monday, Tuesday, a couple people, Monday, Tuesday, they're like, oh my God, I got it all. It's everything. It's beautiful. And the rest of the group is like, screw you. I don't know what you're taking, but they didn't give me the same stuff. Right. <laughs> you know? And then Wednesday, more people are getting it, but still about half of them, you know, are still like, I don't get it. I don't get it. And then tonight, Thursday night, going into Friday, boom. Pretty much the majority of folks get it. And Friday is just amazing here. Um, and, and it happens every week, every week, just like this. It's so beautiful. I want to acknowledge, hey, Dorota, Michael Stewart, welcome, my brother. Um, I'm looking forward to having you in November, Michael. And Tracy will be here in a few weeks. Great to see you. Thank you, guys. I love it when you type in and let me know where you're calling from or, or viewing from. And if you have any questions, um, I want to tell you the other thing. Hey, Heidi. Um, Heidi says hi. Um, another thing that's going on at Rhythmia are the Rhythmia residents, which is amazing. We're building a conscious plant medicine community, high-end conscious plant medicine community here, just on the other side of Rhythmia. And we are building 52 homes. We've sold 31 so far. Amazing, in like six weeks. And but there's still beautiful, beautiful properties left in the jungle with a maloka at the center of the community. You'll have your own maloka where we'll do daily breath work, meditation, and um, and yoga daily, and then plant medicine ceremonies on the first and third Friday of each month. Um, and uh, there's a community garden and a dog run and a river walk and yoga decks and meditation zones and all this going on in the community. And then there's Hacienda Pania, which is the community, the larger community that we're in with private beaches and mountain bike trails and hiking trails and horseback riding and, and golf course and tennis courts. And then there's all the beaches up and down the coast and everything to do in Costa Rica. This is so cool. You guys got to check it out. Go, if you're interested, I think it's called, the website is um, rhythmiaresidences.com. You can check out the residents at Rhythmia or Rhythmia Residence and um, check it out. Let us know what you think. And, and if you're interested, you have to be an alumni to buy a home. So um, come, come, come see us. So now, speaking of that, right? Like people are looking at, oh, what's next for me? What's next? Maybe my home country doesn't feel like home anymore. Or um, maybe the, you know, I'm looking for a different kind of community. Something is seeking to emerge. I'm looking for a new iteration of my next iteration for my life. Something is seeking to emerge. And um, that which is seeking to emerge is always the next iteration of ourselves. The next yet, the next part of us that's, that hasn't yet emerged but it's seeking to emerge. So, so empowering questions for emergence. So many of us are in a place in our lives right now where we're at a turning point. We're at a, we're at a crossroads and we were looking for something more. Um, uh, hey, Laquana, come on. She says, I want to, I, I want to come check you guys out. Come check us out. Hey, this little light. Good to see you. Um, so what's happening in life? What's happening in the world when we're, we're like, we feel like there's something that's seeking to emerge, but we don't quite know what it is. Or maybe we have an idea, but 
you know, it's just an idea and we don't know the next steps to get there. So the principle is that God, the presence is the emergent, is that which is emergent. And, and the, the law of emergence is that that which is emerging is greater than the sum of the parts. Hey, Benny, great to see you. Ripa, hello. Oh, excelente, Ripa. Él me dijo que estoy ex exactamente en ese lugar. Saludos desde Ensenada, Ensenada, México. Pues bienvenidos, hermano. Mi, mi hermano mexicano. Bueno, entonces. Um, entonces, so the law of emergence is that that which is seeking to emerge is God itself. Because that which is seeking to emerge is potential and possibility and and the realm of God, what we might call heaven, is the realm of infinite potential and possibility. In this realm, there is a solution to every problem and there's an answer to every question because all possibilities exist in this realm. It's what quantum physics might call the unified field. Uh, so if there's a realm that exists where every possibility exists, if there's a realm that exists where all problems have a solution and all questions have an answer, then in that realm, there are no problems and there are no questions. Everything is known, everything is answered, everything has a solution. Hey, I wanna say hola to, uh, is it Paramdiel? Paramdiel from El Paso, Texas. My mother was born in El Paso. I know a lot about El Paso, Texas. Um, so, Glad you're there, my brother. And Nancy and Larry from Tileran, just, just up the way at the, at the volcano at Arenal, at the big lake, uh, which is another beautiful thing to do in, in Costa Rica is go to all the volcanoes and the waterfalls and the lakes and the, wow, so much to do here. So, hey, from Cali, Anastasia, great to see you. So that which is seeking to emerge that which is the emergent principle, that which is infinite possibility and potential. It, how do we midwife this? Moni from Mexico, where in Mexico are you, Moni? How do we midwife this? How do we husband this, right? If it's seeking to emerge, how do we catch that, that which is seeking to emerge? Well, the first piece is not to limit our possibilities. And so much of what we do, so there's three realms of knowledge. Let's just say um, there's three realms. Mexico City. Moni says she's from Mexico City. Chilanga. What's up? Que onda, Chilanga? <laughs> um, three realms of knowledge. And Megan from South Africa. Hello. Beautiful. Um, I'm getting so excited about all the people typing in where they're cut from. I'm not staying on topic. So let me get on topic. So three realms of knowledge. That is what we know. What we know we don't know. And... Um, and somebody just said another Chilanga, Rebecca, so cool. Okay, what we know, what we know we don't know, and what we don't know, we don't know. So, so frequently we get in, we, we limit our possibility because we limit ourselves to the realms of knowledge of what we know and what we know we don't know, right? Like I know I know how to speak English and some Spanish. I know I don't know how to speak Russian, and I know I don't know astrophysics, you know, I, I, I'm not an astrophysicist, right? I know that, but, but, and I know there's a bunch of other things that I don't know, but there's a whole realm of knowledge that I don't know, I don't know. I don't even know I don't know it. That's the realm of possibility. That's the realm of what's seeking to emerge. And so frequently I lock myself in to what I know. Okay, something's seeking to emerge. So what's the possibilities of me, um, starting a business? What's the possibilities of me being in a relationship? What's the possibilities of me finding community, right? Well, then I, then I immediately go to what I, well, I might not, I know I don't know how to be in a relationship because I'm not in one now, for example. So then I, I, then I go to this realm of knowledge of, well, here's what I know, how people find relationships. Um, they're on dating websites. They go to bars. They uh, ask friends to set them up on, um, on uh, on blind dates, whatever, right? I'm gonna meet somebody by going and volunteering at this place or right, how to meet somebody, right? 
But the greater realm of knowledge, what I don't know, I don't know, is there's infinite possibilities. There's infinite ways that that thing can be delivered to us. We need not limit the possibilities. This is so much of what happens when we are dealing with that which is seeking to emerge. We begin to narrow the possible ways in which that can emerge for us. So how do we, how do we stay with that which is seeking to emerge? Well, the first is to stay in the qualities, the qualities of what I wish to experience. So if it's about starting a new business or being in a relationship or finding community, then instead of locking into the level of the problem, which is I don't have a relationship, I don't have a business, I'm not in community, how do I get that? That's operating at the level of the problem. And, and that can that's Newtonian physics, cause and effect, very slow, lockstep, one thing after the another, right? Things can happen in that realm, but they happen slowly and they're limited by a cause and an effect. When we step into the greater realm of knowledge of what we don't know, we don't know, and we live in the potential and possibility of qualities, we open up the channel for that which is seeking to emerge, to have a greater channel to emerge through us. So for example, if I'm wanting to start a business, um, then what are the qualities? If that was already done, I already had that new business. What qualities would be emerging for me in that new business? Oh, there'd be financial freedom. Um, there would be uh, independence and, and uh, uh, sovereignty over my own decisions, right? There would be an ability to create that which I really love. So creativity, um, love, uh, abundance, prosperity, um, uh, sovereignty, uh, creativity, right? Those are the qualities that I'm looking to for. So now instead of like, well, I want to start a new business. And I know my business is a coaching business. I know my business is a dry cleaning business, whatever it is, right? Well, there's some, there's some things that you got to do. I got to research business license. I got to know my taxes. I've got to know the market. I've got to do some market and those stuff that's in the realm of what we know, we know, uh, or maybe even what we know, we don't know, but how that business emerges, the miracles that can take place on the road from here to there increase dramatically when I step into the realm of qualities. I don't know how, how that's going to happen is none of my business. It's none of you. None of your business, um, but, but the qualities are. So now I'm holding the idea, the, the, the frequency and feeling tone of the qualities of what's seeking to emerge. Um, if I'm looking for a relationship, I, I'd love to have a relationship. Well, there's, there's um, connection, there's soul felt connection, there's open, honest communication, there's autonomy and harmony. For me, that's a big part, right? That we're, we're autonomous, like I have my individuality, he or she has their individuality, but then harmonious together. Khalil Gibran says, let my love be like the strings of a lute or a guitar. Individual and autonomous as they're, as they're plucked individually, but harmonious as they're strummed together. So, so I'm looking for harmony and autonomy. Those are some of the qualities that I want in a relationship, right? So those are those are, um, hey, Carmelo, great to see you. Um, those, that's, so I'm looking to emerge those qualities. How that relationship emerges isn't my business. If it, I, I'm going to get on the app, I'm going to go volunteer and try and meet people and all that stuff, but it could happen in the craziest ways. Never, ever, ever thought of meeting that person there, right? We don't have to know how. And when we think we know the how, that's when we begin to limit the potential and possibility. That's when we begin to limit that which is seeking to emerge. So that's the first part of opening up the aperture to receive un unlimited potential and possibility from the divine realm. Now, I want to also share with you four empowering questions. And I have to acknowledge that these four questions come from a process developed by Reverend Michael Bernard Beckwith, Reverend Dr. Michael Bernard Beckwith, my teacher and friend and brother. Um, and it's a process called the life visioning process. He has a great book on it. Um, we teach it here also at Rhythmia. Uh, and, um, and your practitioners, 
uh, can teach it to you as well. It's a wonderful process. And basically, it's creating a space in our awareness for a divine idea to emerge, right? It's, it's again, it's not, it's different from visualizing. Like visualizing is more from the realm of what I know or the realm of what I know I don't know, right? I want to, I want to speak. And so I see myself speaking in front of a huge audience at the Hollywood Bowl and I see this many, and I'm going to, you know, all of that stuff. Or I want to start a business and I see the business being successful and I see this many people coming. Or I want to be, excuse me, in a relationship and I, I and, the, and the person's got to have these, they got to meet these criteria, right? So we begin to, to narrow it. But when I step, instead of visualizing, ah, this is what my lover looks like. And this is what it looks like when I'm in a relationship. And this is, these are the things we're doing. That's very powerful. And, and I encourage you to do that. That's visualization. But visioning is catching, is creating a place in our awareness for a divine idea, that which is in the field, that from the realm of what we don't know, we don't know, that from the realm of infinite possibility and potential, I'm opening up my consciousness to receive an idea. And so we ask four questions. First, you get into a deep meditative state. And then these four questions are super empowering. When you're in that meditative state, you ask the question, what is seeking to emerge? What is seeking to emerge uh, in my relationship, right? If it's, it's the relationship that you're looking for, what's seeking to emerge? What's God's idea of my God, man, or woman? What, what's the divine idea? What's the highest expression of me in relationship? Now, I don't know the answer to that. So I listen. And that, and that answer to that question, if you live in the question, the principle is a knock and the door shall be opened. Ask and it shall be answered. This is the principle of the universe. So we start asking empowering questions and we receive the information and don't limit the way the information can come to you. It could be a thought. It could be an idea. It could be a color. It could be a, a shape. It could be a vignette. It could be somebody, like I asked the question and, and, um, and then the next thing you know, Somebody comes up and goes, hey, I was thinking of this idea. What do you think about it? Well, that was exactly what I was thinking, right? You never know. But we ask the question, we open up the aperture for us to receive more light, more love, more wisdom, more intelligence, more beauty, more guidance. So the first question is what's seeking to emerge? What's seeking to, uh, what, is the, what is the divine presence, the loving divine presence, the love intelligence, beauty? What does that realm Think, what, does, what is seeking to emerge from that realm in my life as this project, as this relationship, as this business, as this meeting, as this community, whatever it is? It's the first question. Then we listen and we're really aware of whatever can emerge. It could be a color. It could be a shape. I did a visioning last night and the first things I saw for the first question were shapes. It looked like Pinta from, from a ceremony, Right. So I don't know what that means, but I'm open. So I journaled it down. First question, what's seeking to emerge? What's God's big idea of my life as, or in relationship, or my life in business? What's God's big idea for my life? Maybe it's life, my whole life, I don't know. What's, what's, the, what's next for me in life? What's, what is seeking to emerge as my life? First question. Second question, what must I become? The principle here is that uh, the principle here is that um, I cannot have in this physical form that which I am not willing to become in consciousness. I must become, in other words, we, we the, the, the field creates the form. The field creates the form. The form doesn't create the field. And so we, we see this in the Bible. Uh, it says in Genesis, in the beginning there was the word. And the word was with God and the word became flesh, right? Let's, let's translate that for us today. In the beginning, there was an idea. In the beginning, there was a, a verb, a, 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 a vibration. What's a word, but a vibration. What's a thought, but a vibration, a mental unit of energy, right? 
that's a chemical electrical reaction in our brain. That's a thought, that's a vibration, that's a frequency. So in the beginning, there was a thought. In the beginning, there was a frequency. And the frequency was with God. The frequency was in the realm of infinite possibility and infinite potential. And then that frequency, that idea from the realm of potential manifested and took form. In the beginning, there was the word and the word was with God and the, and the word became flesh. In the beginning, there was an idea. That idea was in the realm of infinite possibility and potential, which is the realm of God. And then that idea manifested. So, so the, the field informs the form from the formless to the formed, from the invisible to the visible. So what must I become in consciousness, in awareness, in order for that idea to emerge? What skills, what gifts, what talents, what capacities must I activate? What must I acquire in order to midwife or husband this idea that's seeking to emerge? Okay, so that's the next question. And we listen, then you sit and listen. And then the third question, what we all have latent skills. We wouldn't be able to see the potential of that next relationship, that next business, that next community, that next idea of our lives. We wouldn't be able to see it unless we had some aspect of it in us already. So the next question then becomes, what do I already have? What, what latent gifts and talents, what undeveloped skills and capacities do I have already? What resources do I have at my disposal already that will facilitate and support the expression of that which is seeking to emerge, right? And so many of us have so many, oh my God, I know these people and I have this resource and, and I already have these skills and talents. And I remember I didn't ever, ever think that that class in college was gonna be useful, but here it is, there's an opportunity, I've got it now. So we then marshal what we already have. And then finally, uh, I think I did this out of order because this should have been the second question, but it doesn't matter. What no longer serves? What must be released in order for this vision to emerge? What must be released? What, what served me, but no longer serves me anymore, right? Um, last night when I did my visioning, uh, when I asked that question, it was the stories. What I needed to release were the stories about myself. I'm lazy. I'm a procrastinator. I'm not organized. Uh, I don't have it in me. Um, uh, people are better at this than me. Uh, all of those, all of those limiting, disempowering stories that I had about myself, right? Those were the things that needed to be released. Now, those served me in the past. How did they serve me? They protected me. They're serving as a role to protect me because, well, if I get out there too far, uh, I'm going to get clipped or I'm going to um, embarrass myself or I'm going to make a fool, whatever it is, they were forming a protection. I get hurt when I express myself or when I try and do things, um, you know, people make fun of me or, uh, or I find that I, I wasn't good at it. So I, 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 I pull in, right? I use those limiting stories to protect myself, to keep boundaries, right? Well, that served for a while, but it's not going to serve me in the next iteration of that that which is seeking to emerge. So the four questions, what must, what is seeking to emerge? What's the divine idea for this project, for this meeting, for this relationship, for this community, for this relation, for whatever, what's seeking to emerge? What, um, what, what do, what, what, what must I acquire? What must I become? What must I become in order for this to emerge? What must I release? What no longer serves me? And then finally, what do I already have? What capacities, skills, resources, talents, gifts do I already have? So those are the four questions. Let me just say hi, Sin, uh, Cinder. Um, absolutely love Reverend Michael. Absolutely, me too. And Nikki says, hello. Hi, Nikki. And Dorota, I love you. And I love this as well. So, so the truth is something's always seeking to emerge in, through, and as you, in, through, and as me. And if we attune ourselves... By, by locating ourselves in possibility and potential instead of the past, which is what we know or what we know we don't know, we open up the space for, for manifestation to rush in. Our acceptance makes it real and opens the space for manifestation to rush in. One of my favorite lines from the Oath of Manifestation written by our beloved Reverend Dr. Cheryl Ward. So that's our talk. 
That's our talk. Something's always seeking to, re- to emerge in through and as you live in the, in the qualities of that which is seeking to emerge. That's the first thing to do. Live in the qualities of that which is seeking to emerge. W- what are the feeling tones? What are the qualities of that? Not the how, not the, how, not the next steps. That will come when, in, in other ways. That will be revealed to you. The correct course of action reveals itself. But first, I locate myself in potential and possibility, the qualities, the potential of creativity, the potential of love, the potential of abundance, the potential of vitality, the potential of creativity, the potential of elegance, the potential of of harmony and balance and order. What, What are the qualities that will exist if that vision's already, that's where I first live in the qualities. And then I ask those empowering questions. All right. We had some, Catherine just joined us from Florida and um, April Starr from California um, and Heidi from South Dakota. Thank you all so much for joining us. Such a great pleasure. Come see us at Rhythmia. Call the number right there and, 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 and just ask some questions. Ask some empowering questions <laughs> from the people at the phone room. And, um, and uh, so grateful, so grateful, so grateful. Greg from California, what's up, brother? And Suzanne from Munich. Oh, we have a we have a beautiful lady here this week from Munich. I was just talking to her. Um, can't wait to have you back either, Greg. And Anquia, please come visit. We'd love to have you. All right, everybody. Peace and richest blessings. I'm knowing that you are guided by an infinite intelligence. You are guarded by an infinite love, a love that knows no selection, a love that is without boundaries and limits, and that you are sourced by a power that is inexhaustible. All things are available. Nothing is being withheld. Let us open up to receive the good that is constantly being broadcast. And so it is. All right. Much love. See you guys soon.